Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. We begin our worship this day in the name of the one who created us, Jesus Christ, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit, who comforts and sustains us. Amen. The title of our theme, our message for this day is, She Gave Everything She Had. She gave everything she had. And the first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I've commanded a widow, a widow there, to feed you. So Elijah set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing to ba nothing baked only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Here ends our first reading. And our gospel is according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter, um, verses uh, 38 through 44. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues, and places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And... So again, um, the title of our message is Everything She Had. And let us pray. And now may the words 
of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And so, sisters and brothers, in these readings for today, both the first reading and the gospel, widows are mentioned. Widows are the focus of these readings. The widows are referred to three times. First, we have the widow of Zarephath. Then we have Jesus saying to watch out for those scribes in their fancy robes and um, who like all the attention, but devour widows' houses. And then we have Jesus speaking of this poor widow who, th this parable is known as the widow's might. This poor widow who put in everything she had as her offering to God. And why would widows be so important in the Bible, both in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, and to Jesus? Well, um, we see that because in, in the Hebrew Bible, there's this word anawim, and it, it means those who are... Um, disenfranchised, those, to, those who are marginalized, the little ones, the ones who cry out to God for justice. And in biblical times, it meant particularly orphans and widows. It meant those who were poor, but particularly orphans and widows. And um, and Jesus's whole ministry, if we fast forward to the New Testament, was really focused on the anawim, the little ones, the ones who cried out to God for justice. Jesus paid special attention to those little ones and um, wanted to make sure that we pay attention to them also. Um, so... Um, in the world religions class I teach at the university, um, we all look at our at the world religions through a particular lens, and the lens I look at um, is through the lens of the Anawim. What do all of the world's religions teach in terms of the marginalized, in terms of the disenfranchised, in terms of those little ones, those people in society that no one cares about, that fall through the cracks. Um, and as I said, in Jesus's time, it was the poor. In the Old Testament time, too, it was the poor. And it was widows and orphans. But today, who are those disenfranchised? Who are those marginalized ones? In my course, we look at the poor who still today are marginalized. We look at women um, who still do not have equality in most parts of the world. And my students asked me if we could also focus on the LGBTQ community, who, as we know, is often marginalized or um, disenfranchised and are always at risk of that. So um, I invite you to think of others who might fall into that category. Um, today I had worship at Church Beyond the Walls, which is a street church I serve in Providence. And it's for people experiencing poverty and homelessness. So of course, the unhoused are very much the anawim that Jesus um, is concerned about. And so, um, as I said today, the particular focus three times is widows. And I read a commentary this week that said that widows 
Well, we, we know that widows were at particular risk because in biblical times, in both the time of the Hebrew Bible and in Jesus' time, women had no status, no rights, except through their relationship with a man. So if a, a female was a young girl, she hopefully had the protection of a father. When she grew up and passed the age of puberty, she would be married off and her status um, would be through her husband. And then she better hope that she had a son um, because as when her son grew up, she would continue to have status through her son. And I had never thought of this, but this week I was reading a commentary which said that because women were married at like puberty age, that was the average age, often the husbands were more established, so they were quite a bit older than their wives, their young wives. And so they would often die um, long before they are much younger wives. And so widows were very common. It was pretty prevalent, and I had never really thought of that, but that makes perfect sense. So both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament focus a lot on widows and how we treat widows. And today... We heard that story of the two different widows, and the one from the Elijah story um, is pretty amazing because she was not a Jew. She was an outsider, and the prophet Elijah um, had been battling evil King Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel, and they had... Um, brought false gods into the community of Israel and people were worshiping these false gods. And so the prophet Elijah preached that people needed to put aside these false gods and worship the Lord, their God. And he said, if you don't, then there will be a huge drought. And in fact, um, there was for three and a half years, a terrible drought, which caused also a famine. So Elijah goes to this beyond Israel, this church beyond the walls, so to speak, to this beyond place. And there he sees this poor widow who's starving to death with her child. She's gathering sticks to make a little fire to make a final meal with what's left of the flour and the oil. And here comes this Israelite, this prophet who says, bring me a little water in the desert, right? And bring me some bread. And she's like, sir, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go home. I have very, very little left. I'm about to make a final meal to feed my son and myself. And then we're gonna die of starvation. And Elijah challenges her. He says, bring me a little water and make use that flour and that oil to make some bread and serve me a little first and then serve yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the jar of meal will never run out and the jug of oil will not fail until this drought is over and the Lord has returned rain and crops to the earth. So this woman who had nothing, practically nothing, gave all that she had to this man of God, Elijah. She handed it, everything she had over to God and to this man of God. And the prophet's words came true. The, the jar of flour never ended. The jug of oil never ran out. 
and she and her son and Elijah lived until rain returned to the earth. Um, fast forward to the story of Jesus, um, where he, first of all, criticizes those in power who devour widows' houses, who, who exploit and take advantage of the poor. And then secondly, Jesus holds forth this poor widow as an example of such incredible faith whose tiny meager offering, whose widow's might, was so much more valuable than these huge offerings, these generous offerings of those with wealth. Because Jesus said they all gave what was left over from their abundance, but she, in her poverty, gave all that she had, everything she had. So today I invite you to think about what you have. And sometimes we feel like those widows that we, we, there's not much left, right? And it might be material goods, it might be money, it might be our, our strength, it might be um, our energy, we might feel worn out, we might feel like we haven't anything left to give. But the message for us today is, can we give all that we do have in that trust that God will turn it into more than enough, more than enough. And so I'm filming today partly because I ran out of time and it's now dark out, but I'm filming in front of this um, little quilt that my daughter made for me of mother and child, of Mary and the Christ child, because I think Mary was a perfect example of someone who gave everything that she had. Here I am, she said, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be with me according to thy will. Okay. Um, and I'm also inspired by um, November is the month that my mother is very present to me because November 17th is the anniversary of her death, entrance into the heavenly uh, reign. Um, and she was someone who gave everything she had, both to God and also to her children and her grandchildren. This day, I also think of a woman at Church Beyond the Walls, I mentioned a woman, Mama Kelly, who was really a matriarch of Church Beyond the Walls, and today we had on an altar cloth that she had given us of this beautiful fabric from her homeland, Liberia. And Mama Kelly hated the cold because she was from Liberia, where it's a lot warmer. Um, but I'll never forget, on the coldest winter day, you could see this bright green being in the distance. And she had this bright green down coat, big long coat. And she was up in her 80s and she would be walking along limping because she had some health issues. And she would walk in the freezing cold in her big green coat. And that out of the pocket of that coat, she would take a crumpled dollar bill and she would place it in the offering plate. And I always thought of this widow from today's gospel when I thought of Mama Kelly. And then she often couldn't even stay for worship because she said, I'm too cold. I'm going to go home. But she'd always come all that way just to give her offering 
She gave all that she had. So sisters and brothers, this day I invite you to think of the people in your life who give their all. It's also Veterans Weekend. We think of our veterans at Church Beyond the Malls today. We um, gave out care packages made by the university students for our veterans. Who is it you know who's an example of someone who gave their all? And may we, who... Um, especially when we feel that we have nothing left, like those two widows in both of our readings, may we have the faith and the trust to give God our all. This weekend, when I read Bible commentaries, they pointed out something I'd never seen before. The second reading for this weekend is from the book of Hebrews, and in that book, um, they speak about Christ as the great high priest who differs from other priests because other priests had to give an offering week after week, again and again. But it said Christ, our high priest, gave the gift of himself once and for all. And they paralleled this story about the widow's might, this widow who gave everything she had, who gave her all, comes right before um, Jesus kind of enters into Jerusalem or heads toward Jerusalem. So they talk about this woman who gave God her all as a foreshadowing, really, of Christ who gave his all, who gave everything he had for the sake of this world. So this day, sisters and brothers, may we be inspired by these widows and by, of course, Christ, who for the love of this world gave their all for the love of God, gave their all. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.